Next on the list is this funny story courtesy of Hypebeast about the Omega Swatch Speedmaster worldwide release that legitimately sparked a riot on Carnaby Street, which brought back a lot of heady fun memories for myself, especially considering the times that I spent, you know, queuing outside of stores in central London overnight getting the mcdonald's breakfast with people and stuff and then getting your thing in the morning walking back to the station with your bags or checking them in box or in that what's up square in topical road but you know what i mean right it's a great time and obviously with with the popularity of resale culture or streetwear or hype beast culture whatever it, you know these kind of years gone by the need to queue outside stores has definitely dwindled a lot of places have basically favored the online drops and that sellout frenzy more so than the queuing things local councils got involved police were not too up happy about it and it's just kind of died that whole culture which i think is really annoying i still think there's a place to be had for having drops where you have people actually go to the store who want to go to a store if you have an allocation in store similar to any other brand you know your high fashion brands your electronic brands they're able to sell you know iphone phones and Balenciaga sneakers online and they also have an allegation that goes in store so if you want to go in the store and pick it up in hand without having to wait you can go and do so but for whatever reason they never make enough of these things in the kind of streetwear culture sort of vibe of stuff they always make a limited amount they kind of make artificial you know artificial scarcity and then they tell everybody that it's limited and then you know they they, they drop some ahead of time to influencers who then put them up online they get crazy resale prices, especially nowadays with people out out of jobs and you know bouncing around from here to here. They're gonna grab a you know a couple of watches and try and sell them for ten k too because why not? So you know they create they create a problem for themselves. But it's still nice to see such an unsuspecting brand like Swatch be able to kind of restore the feeling. It has to be honest. I have to be honest in that regard because it beats having to see you know queues outside of fucking Carnaby Street size to buy crappy Nike Air Max part of Nike Air Max day or something nonsense like that. No one wants to see that. Who cares? You know what I mean, it's the same old nonsense, same old tired routine. At least we're getting something interesting. You know, an actual Omega Swatch watch, an actual watch, an analog watch that people are going crazy for. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So it says the follows. Um, let's scroll down the article. It says Swatch stores across the world, from London to Geneva to Hong Kong to Miami, were swarmed on Saturday as Omega Swatch Speedmaster Moon Watch was released in stores. The Omega Swatch Speedmaster collection consists of eleven pieces referencing different planets and celestial bodies within the solar system. That's what you know. It's hype. There's eleven different watches. Crazy, including the Moon, Earth, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Venus, Uranus, Neptune, and Mercury. The quartz moon swatch chronograph um, references the mechanical Omega Speedmaster moon watch inspired by the NASA's Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969. Recently, of as of, as of, as of like what maybe a couple of years now, I've been super into SpaceX stuff. Right, I follow quite a few channels online where I just kind of you know get caught up on all things concerning um, space travel and whatnot. And it's been quite interesting to kind of get involved in, right? To kind of read some books, check out some documentaries here and there, blah, 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 blah. So maybe this isn't a coincidence. Maybe other guys out there too have also become a bit interested in that side of things, especially with, you know, Elon Musk becoming like a new a new age celebrity in his kind of old age. People have maybe kind of been inspired to check out that sort of stuff and the race to the moon, the race to Mars and whatnot, you know, intestinal space station. Maybe that's been the thing. Or maybe just watches in general have been a quiet sleeper that I haven't really been paying attention to. But it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy to see this is, you know, a watch like that is kind of commanding such a response. It says the collection marks the first time Swatch Group Luxury Swatch's uh, Swatch Group's Luxury Omega brand collaborated with an entry level Swatch counterpart at a price point of two sixty dollars, which is really good, all things considered. Buyers can purchase the entire level watch collection for much less than the original Speedmaster Moonwatch. True, while Swatch has made it clear that the Moonwatch is not a limited edition release, so it's not limited. Thousands have flocked to the nearest Swatch store that was deployed in Geneva and a store closure in central London due to the chaotic scenes unfolding outside. The funny thing about all this stuff that always happens. I feel like the more this stuff happens, the more fucking what you call it, um, replicas come out. This is the common adage. The more you hype up this stuff, where it's gonna be high resale, it just it just kind of bolsters that replica market, and then it kind of cheapens the original product you put out there. It's a weird sort of give and take. I don't know if these brands know it and it just take the loss anyway, because I feel like don't get me wrong. If you're going to buy a legitimate watch, you're going to buy it anyway. You're not going to go and buy the replica. It's not going to happen because you want the actual watch watch. But if you just want the look and you don't care about where you get the watch, 
it, it may immediately cheapens the original product that come out because the replicas exist because it's going to be like it doesn't make any sense like because for sure once this is all done you know two months down the line you start seeing them pop up on aliexpress on all these other sites i don't know get mock whatever the gtx so there's other sites out there that kind of sell fucking reboot stuff like in it like an etsy or something you'll for sure see these pop up for sure i'm gu i almost guarantee this is going to happen so i don't really i don't know i think the whole like hyping everything or make or making it giving the impression it's limited edition it can kind of you know come back and shoot in the face um it says continues here it says while swatches made it clear da, 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 according to the video interview with Houdinki, a buyer revealed that he traveled from las vegas to la and waited outside for more than 22 hours to secure the watch and is currently selling it for more than 10 times vision value on ebay and other secondary markets okay let's see how much it's selling it for actually on ebay let's see let's see if we can get an actual real life um kind of view on how much this stuff is selling for online because i bet you it's already kind of dropped in value because these things drop so so fast let's see what it's saying here yeah see it's it was 10k supposedly i'm assuming it was the first one so the first one i guess online before everybody else gets it, it's going to be 10k and then it's already been dropped now oh okay i've, I've got to check there so seven we got one from one thousand to seven. That's the pink one. No one wants, right? I don't know what which, which one's that one. That's the mission to Venus. Is pink. The ones that everyone wants is gonna be the grey ones, isn't it? The darker colours. So the Mercury, Neptune. Neptune is four thousand, one hundred bids only. Mercury is seven thousand bids, 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 bids. Oh my god! No wonder people are going crazy. If you can buy it for two bills and rip it, because it kind of you know it looks it kind of looks like as well. It kind of a little bit looks like um. The Jacobs and Co. watches. Let's see complete items. Let's see if they've got the complete ones. How much they've been going for recently. One sold already. Mercury for 1,500. Buy it now. 1,000. 3,500. So maybe the other ones are inflated and they're kind of fake bids. I'm not too sure. But they're really going for crazy amounts. Someone sold off for £30. That's a bit weird. I've been, okay, we're postage to 500. So about £800. God almighty, they've been selling for a lot, in it? jesus christos absolutely nuts anyway uh go back to the article uh blah, blah, blah. for the for for those that missed out restock should arrive in the coming weeks at select store so yeah you'll be able to get them again so this is just hype for nothing really um this is a this is a what this is a q outside the what Covent garden branch of, of swatch <laughs> And the other thing that's clear too, this is kind of just a smile, minor thing on my end. It's pretty evident how normie resell culture has got now because when you look at queues, you don't really see cool people. Now this is a weird point to make, but back in the day when we used to queue, you'd see people that clearly were into the thing that they were queuing for. Whether they were head to toe wearing Bape, they were wearing some limited edition Air Max, they were wearing some limited edition Jordan, they had some crazy jacket. Like you could always tell who was really about this life and actually living their raps right they'll they'll maybe dare to buy two to maybe flip one to keep one or you know whatever it may be but they're definitely a part of the culture they're part of the scene they loved what they were into whereas now it's mostly people just trying to flip they're basically people that maybe you know they're more fans of gary v than they are of actually you know chris gibbs or is it maybe the chris gibbs or the, the chris guy from union right they probably identify more with the gary v guy than the union dude which is i think something that i'm not really a fan of there's too many of these kind of normie guys just trying to you know hoover up these kind of cultural artifacts in the hope of kind of making a quick buck and you know for the most part i'd imagine you'd have to buy a few of these to how many you have to buy of these to make it worthwhile standing outside of a shop for 22 hours to buy a watch you have to maybe buy the whole collection in it but I'd imagine a few people that are buying them are probably only going to buy one or two to buy one or two to only make two and i say only but to only make a couple of grand especially nowadays in today's economy considering what you want to do with your life especially if you're out of work is that really going to move the needle is it really going to change things for you for the better i don't necessarily think so if it's money you're going to use to you know i remember back in the day when i used to do reselling of stuff especially stuff that i didn't want anymore you do it so you could just buy more things or to go on holiday right i remember even going to new york as the first sort of boys holiday back in the day i don't know when that was maybe like 2008 or 7 or something nonsense like that right 
I funded my entire trip. That was a flight over there on Virgin Airways, um, spending money to go buy stuff at Supreme in actual New York for the first time ever. All of that was basically purchased. All that was purchased through reselling. Be able to flip shoes and shit was able to pay for that entire thing because at the time I didn't have a job. Right, I found it diff incredibly difficult to get my first job, especially outside of uni. Especially so after uni, sorry. Right, because yeah, that was 2008. Yeah, yeah, I find it difficult to get an actual first job. It was so, so hard. Even just a sales assistant job. I only got my actual first proper like job kind of paying okay in that kind of sales fashion world in 1948 because I knew somebody, not because I was the best person for the job. Right, I kind of got it through nepotism, really, for the most part. Um, so you know, being able to make that extra bit of money was able to do stuff that I couldn't already do, but. I don't think I could do reselling nowadays with the hope of maybe having it supplement my work wage or DJ. That, it just wouldn't make any sense. It would be something you do as an add-on, maybe to do other things. But again, 22 hours. And then, you know, you have to sell it within a very really short window. You have to get it and sell it now. There's no, this doesn't acquire value over the time because, like I said, they're going to be restocks of it. It's not limited edition. And also, it's 11 watches for fuck's sake. Swatch have made a lot of money on this, but they want to make more. So they're going to make more of these. They're going to put them out again. And then by the time they put they get put out again, there's going to be tons of re there's going to be tons of fakes made already. They're going to, you know, these factories in China are going to see all the ones that sell the most and just rep them. You know it's going to happen. <laughs> That's a crazy queue. Oh my god. That's going for miles. Oh my god. And I bet you a lot of these stores like Swatch and stuff, especially in Covent Garden, are welcoming this because they don't probably get they don't probably get more than a hundred people through their doors on a on a busy Saturday. Do you know what I mean? So having all this extra attention is definitely something that they kind of welcome in. I'd imagine most of central London because people, you know, foot traffic there has definitely dwindled, especially after the pandemic. Or, you know, post-pandemic, all that we're living, especially in the UK. They're probably welcoming all this attention because they never, ever get it prior. Another scene here, courtesy of uh, the line at Chad Stones for the Swatch Omega watch, easily 500 meters long. <laughs> Another video here showing the line in Times Square, New York. Yeah. yeah, like I said, just a lack of cool people in the queue just automatically for me just makes it lame. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just, again, the, the hipster in me talking, but part of being a part of the scene and being into this sort of stuff was actually meeting cool and interesting people that you can legitimately, like, you know, some of my bestest friends in the world i've met through standing in queues waiting for hype release stuff that we sometimes didn't even get that's how hard it was right back in the day you'd queue for flipping 16 hours and you sometimes you wouldn't even get the thing that you wanted i remember the you know the famous story that i always talk about queuing outside of busy workshops one time the bape store upside on upper james street i think this might have been the release for the bape chomper varsity jacket right classic varsity jacket i think it was um the one that um clips wore on one of the uh, one of the magazines or something i forgot anyway if you know you know and i guess at the time we didn't we weren't really pally pally with the bait people that used to work there but the people that used to queue in the front were some of the cunts that you know i won't name they they were really pally pally and they already had knowledge of how many they were coming in so they got there ahead of time before all of us knowing exactly how much were in stock they bought out the entire range and there was nothing left for us to buy and i remember queuing outside that store for 11 i think hours or something and then getting in the store not being able to buy anything not even a hoodie zero was available and anything i had left had to i had to leave with something right that flipping denzel washington clip i gotta leave with something so i bought a flipping piece of sellotape like a roll a sellotape roll babe one it was like 30 pounds it wasn't really cheap like something like a purple camo or something that's what i bought that's what i had to leave with because there was literally nothing available at the time and that was brutal but again I met some good friends there, had some jokes, you know, you shared your pain collectively because you're all catching L's. But this is just lame, just standing there because you're so yeah. social and, you know, no one's cool here. Just a group of people just wanted to, what, flip this stuff so they can buy NFTs. Like, nah, man, I'll pass on that.
Like, yeah, no one here looks cool. They all look lame as hell. I'm, I'm sorry. Not, not that it matters, but... Yeah. We so cool. Like... And maybe it's the privilege of the employed or in general, but I think I've got too much pride, especially nowadays, considering I feel like I put on enough work and I paid my dues enough in the world out there to be doing this myself. I couldn't do it nowadays. I just couldn't. It would have to be something really special to get me to get out of my house to queue. I'd much rather just pay resale. And if I can't pay resale, just buy a rep legitimately. There's nothing I can think of that would make me want. Oh, you know what would make me want to queue? This will make me want to queue. If they ever retroed um, the original ones, actually, right? So let's see if I can see if I can get if I can get one to sew here. A bathing ape. This is the only thing I would actually queue for. Let's see. I'm looking for one like that's like early two thousands, like a yellow camo color. Let's see if I can find it on here. So this is, might be the only thing I would queue for, right? So I got it here. A baby nip snowball jacket, right? This is a classic grail that I've always kind of wanted in my collection. I've had a couple, but they were never right. I had one that was like padded. It's sort of like, and again, I regret selling it. It was absolutely beautiful. It was like a padded down jacket. It's similar to like this snowball jacket, but it was obviously, you know, not shell. It was more padded, but it just didn't fit right. And then I had another one that was darker and smaller arms I had to sell. So I never had the perfect one I actually want. But if they were ever to release the Bathing Ape um, snowball jacket in this sort of like yellow camo, right? Um, to the original specifications of how they were when they first came out, then I would go in queue for it for it in a heartbeat no way you know no way that i wouldn't do that but apart from that i can't think of anything else legitimately that i would queue for there's nothing out there worthwhile to queue for in that regard it just doesn't exist i don't think so anyway and even these are crappy these versions of it i'm showing you here at the moment let's see if i can get another one let's see if i can just do vintage i think it might be like early 2000s the one i want actually it's kind of weird. What one that's got this sort of label on the inside, right? Um, that's kind of the one that I would want with this sort of label. So if they would ever release something like this, then maybe you'd see me queue up again. Oh, I think that might. Be, oh, yeah, this is the one I had. Yeah, this is the jacket I had actually that I sold. It was similar to this. It was yeah, this is the one puffer jacket. How much is selling that for? Five hundred and thirty-eight. I think I might have sold mine for more far less than that. Actually, to be honest, embarrassingly enough. So yeah, this this is the one I had. It was like a puffy version of the snowball jacket. Pretty sure. Let's see if it goes up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the, this is the one I have. Maybe this I would kind of maybe queue for, but a watch, a Swatch watch as well. Like, come on, man. That's like ridiculous levels of lame. Don't know why it's not letting me do it, but hey, let's just move off of this now. Get on my nerves. Anyway, let's go back to the actual watch itself and see what was available. Come on, you crashed. Don't tell me you've crashed. Okay, cool. Good. So, yeah, the watches themselves, you know, cool enough, I guess. It's, it's maybe cool to see people buying watches again. Might mean people actually want to tell the time. I remember there was a time that I was actually looking to get another G-Shock because I didn't want to keep looking at my phone when I was in the gym or whatnot or just out and about. It's good to just have a watch. Um, But to queue for something that looks like a, like I said, it's like a Jacobs & Co version of a Swatch. I don't know if that's the vibe for me, really. Or are people buying them because they want them to look like fake Rolexes? I don't know. Some of these watches I think people buy, are they buying them because they're actually into watches or because they want them to look like a watch that they can't afford to buy? Who knows? But yeah, regardless, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a cold, cold day in hell before you see me queue up with these things again. Like these guys play games with us for the most part. Do you know what I mean? They invent these artificial points of scarcity. They get shocked and surprised when we go out there and try and make some money and try and flip some stuff. And then, they then you know pull the give us a bit of a rug pull and end up dropping them all again in the same colors you know in far more quantity later on down the line but hey what can we do in it what can we do